today we begins with the history taking and general examination which is the topic of clinical physiological lab what is the importance of a good history it frequently affords a lead in the right direction or clue to diagnosis thus elicitation of various characteristics of a pain may suggest its true nature as one of angina pectoris renal colic acute appendicitis or duodenal ulcer it rules out or eliminates certain diagnostic possibilities it suggests further avenue of investigation it helps to focus the observer's attention to the system or system involved since symptoms usually precede signs the history may afford a real proof of disease than a clinical examination so all these are the importance of history taking now we are going to see which are the steps of the history taking presenting a case of 65 years old married or unmarried hindu male or female named abc working as or studying pqr residing at xyz of lower middle or higher socio economic class admitted to g1 ward on the date so you have to write on the date on which you are taking the history or either you can take history in the ward or in the opd so came to medicine opd or you have to write the respective opd in which you are taking the history with the following chief complaints so that is the basic paragraph which every history must have to follow presenting a case of 65 years old married or unmarried hindu male or female so in this cases you have to ask the age of your patient either he is married or she is married or unmarried male or female then you have you noticed and named you have to ask the name of the patient working as or studying if he is a student then you have to write the studying at this institution in this course or working you have to write in this field at this place etc so working as or studying pqr residing at xyz residing at means you have to write the full address of your patient and uh, so you have to ask your patient about their socio economic class and admitted to g1 ward so i am just giving you example that the g1 ward uh, in whatever the ward you are standing or uh, taking the history you have to write if you are not taking this history in the ward then you have to write the respective name of the opd and with the following chief complaint so that is the basic paragraph for uh, all the history in the all the departments so you have to simply you have to write presenting a case of 65 years old married hindu male named abc working as laborer whatever the thing is residing at 53 this this society this address full of the address of lower socio economic class admitted to g1 ward on the date so today's date is the 13 january 2019 so that is what you have to write and uh, with the following chief complaints here the most important thing why we have to ask for age the age of the patient may serve to suggest certain diagnostic possibilities and rule out others for example degenerative neoplastic and vascular elements are more common in the middle aged or elderly infectious fevers and congenital anomalies are commoner in childhood so that's why we have to ask the age of the patient now the sex certain diseases such as cerebral hemorrhage coronary thrombosis hemophilia and malignancy of the tongue and stomach so a special affinity for the male sex other such as thyroid disorders and mammary cancer so a similar prediction for the female case so that's why we have to see the sex of the patient now occupation or the trade of the patient may at times afford a clue to the diagnosis for example lead poisoning is common in plumbers and painters pneumoconiosis in silica workers and coal miners 
That's why we have to ask the occupation of the patient. Residential address of the patient may serve to focus one's attention on the various environmental factors which may involve and may also prove useful in the subsequent follow-up of the case. So residential address with the house number you must have to ask because uh, sometimes a patient came for example of the malaria and uh, we have to find out whether the same cases are present in the same area or not. That's why we have to need the house number as well as the whole residential address of the patient. Chief complaint. The first step in the history taking after the recording of preliminary data is to state quite briefly the exact nature and duration of the chief complaint or the presenting symptoms. So chief complaint is the next step, brief history about the main presenting complaints which lead the patient to you. So in this chief complaint you have to write only the complaints which patients have and which patients leads to you. And you have to write the oldest complaint first, for example pain in abdomen since 4 days. So here it's not a X pain in abdomen since four days the oldest complaint you have to write in the first and the whatever the recent complaint you have to write later on so vomiting since two days for example the next complaint will be the weakness since one days so you have to write in this manner so pain in abdomen since four days vomiting since two days weakness since one days likewise you have to write here the chief complaint must be in the patient's word only. For example, patient that, that he is or she is having the pain in abdomen, then you have to write pain in abdomen. If the patient saying that he is having the difficulty in breathing, then you have to write difficulty in breathing since these days. But never try to use the word dyspnea. If patient said that they having the difficulty in swallowing, so you have to write difficulty in swallowing since these days. Never try to use the word dysphagia. Alright? After the chief complaint, you have to ask the origin, duration and progression or ODP of disease or history of the present illness. So in this case, we have three complaints, pain in abdomen vomiting and uh, later one I told you about the weakness so you have to ask the origin duration and progression of pain in abdomen origin duration and progression of vomiting and origin duration and progression of weakness elaborate every complaint in detail about its origin of time and how it is progressed to the current position in this section you have to write paragraph like manner and every complaint in detail for example uh, starting with the patient was asymptomatic before four days gradually he or she develops pain in abdomen the pain the every characteristic uh, what what will be the time of the pain at in the morning in the evening in the afternoon after meal before meal or oh, everything about the pain you have to mention in this paragraph so this section represents the origin, duration and progression of disease or history of the present illness. Now the next section is of the past history in which you have to ask your patient about the diabetes, hypertension, tuberculosis, jaundice, whether it is present or not. And you must have to ask whether the similar chief complaints if he or she had in the previous few months back or not. And if you are not able to find any positive or significant thing then you just write not significant past history in this section. Alright. The next is the family history. If the same complaints are present in family members or they have diabetes, hypertension or such chronic disease. So you have to write in this family history section and if uh, you are not able to find any significant or positive family history just write not significant family history. After this the next is a personal history. In this personal history you have to ask for the diet. 
diet it should be the veg or mixed sleep you have to write the adequate 7 to 8 hours nightly sleep so you have to mention that bowel and bladder habits mean urination and defecation whether it is normal or not addiction in this addiction section you have to mention the exit time duration content of the product he or she is addicted to for example someone is addicted to tobacco then you have to write the which tobacco product he or she is using at which time since how many years everything about the addiction you have to mention and if you are taking the psychiatric history then you must have to mention about the social media addiction too in this section next is the menstrual history in female patients ask for any irregularities of the menstrual cycle after the completion of the history taking now we begins with the general examination in the general examination section we have to see whether the patient is conscious cooperative and well oriented to time place and person or not so here what will happen patient may be conscious semi conscious unconscious so you have to find out the consciousness of the patient and whether it is cooperative you just you have to ask the patient what's your name where you are sitting what's the time is running right now either it's a morning afternoon or evening or night uh, what is what is the name of your relatives what is the name of your father or daughter that's how you will find out patient is conscious cooperative and well oriented to time place and person so your first sentence should be like this after that you have to record the vitals in this vitals there is a mnemonic which is tprbp t for temperature p for pulse r for respiratory rate and b for blood pressure so you have to record the vitals temperature pulse rate respiratory rate and blood pressure once the vital is recorded now you have to look for the general signs i think everyone is knowing about what is symptom and what is sign symptom means everything which patient tells to you what the complaints which patient tells to you and sign means whatever the doctor sees in the patient so here it's a pneumonic police P for paler, O for edema, L for lymphadenopathy, I for icterus, C for cyanosis and clubbing. So you have to see for the police or general science which is paler, edema, lymphadenopathy, icterus, cyanosis and clubbing. In my next lecture or the part 2 of this history taking and general examination you will find out how to see all these general signs in the patient. After this general science, you have to check thoroughly about the head to toe examination. Starting from the hairs, skins, forehead, eyebrows, eyes, clara, nose, lips, tongue, cheeks, neck, everything you have to see thoroughly starting from the head till the toe. So that is known as head to toe examination. Once you complete your head to toe examination, the first subtitle is of the systemic examination. There are four systemic examinations. First one is the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, abdominal system and central nervous system. Depending upon the chief complaints, you have to examine the specific system. For example, our chief complaint is pain in abdomen, vomiting and weakness. So it indicates us that a patient having the abnormality related to the abdominal system. So in this section we are going for the abdominal systemic examination. For example if a patient complain of the left sided chest pain as well as difficulty in breathing then we will examine the cardiovascular system. That's how you have to choose which system you have to examine. For example some patient having the dual system involvement so in these cases you have to examine the both the systems so the main headings of the systemic examination for all the system is inspection palpation percussion and auscultation so these are the four parts of the systemic examination 
I will describe in detail about every part in my next session or the part 2 of the history taking and general examination. So please wait for that. Please remember everyone must have to follow the systemic examination in this order only. First should be the inspection, second should be the palpation, third one is the percussion and fourth one is the auscultation. All right. After the completion of the systemic examination, we have to give the provisional diagnosis. If certain type of investigations are needed, then we have to prescribe the investigations. Once we see the proper investigation, for example, blood test, different type of blood test, CT scan, X-ray, depending upon that chief complaint, we will go on the final diagnosis. So we have to give the final diagnosis what the patient having or what the disease the patient is suffering from and after that last is the treatment part. So these all are the steps of history taking. One more time I am going to revise you presenting a case of 65 years old married Hindu male named ABC working as a laborer residing at this address of the lower socio-economical class admitted to this ward on dead this and came to medicine opinion with the following cheap complaints for example pain in abdomen since four days and vomiting since two days after that section you have to go for the origin duration and progression of the disease or the history of present illness after that you have to ask for the past history next is the family history in the section of personal history, you have to ask for the diet, sleep, boil and bladder habits and addiction. Menstrual history in case of female patients. Then general examination. In this general examination section, you have to write the patient is conscious, cooperative and well oriented to time, place and person. If he or she is, otherwise you have to write down according to this. Vitals. You have to record the temperature, pulse rate, respiratory rate and blood pressure of the patient. After that, you have to see for the general signs. For example, paler, edema, lymphadenopathy, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, etc. Once you completed your general signs, go for the head to toe examinations. Now the first subtitle is the systemic examination. Systemic examination should be performed in this manner, inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. After you complete your systemic examination, there will be the provisional diagnosis. You have to provide the provisional diagnosis. But to confirm the provisional diagnosis, we have to certain type of investigation must have to do. So investigations next one final diagnosis after we check our investigations we have to give the final diagnosis and once we having our final diagnosis the next part is the treatment of the patient 